I created a test project in Studio 2019, which looks like this. So you can see I've nested some folders at a fairly high level. And I did lots of them. In actual fact, there's, I think, 54 files, something like that, nested deep inside these folders to try and replicate what you explained in your community post. And then what I did was I created the project in Studio 2019. From that, I created a project package and I've got my package here. So now I'm gonna use Studio 2021 to open that package. So we can see how that works with the package. In truth, it should be exactly the same because all I'm doing is creating a project from that package. So I've got a project here now. It doesn't matter whether I created it or not. So there's my, um, my project and you can see from here that I've got, because I've got the include subfolders checked, I've got loads and loads and loads and loads of files. And in fact, I've got 54 files and I've got the same in three different languages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-translate this file, these files first of all, because if I'm using the export for bilingual review, that's not really something you should be using to translate the files in, rather to review them. So I'm just going to do this quickly. So I'll use the batch tasks and I'll just pseudo translate them because that'll be pretty quick. It'll also be quite funny. So I do, okay, let's remove the characters at the start and end just so it looks like it's actually something real even though we know it's not. And I guess if you're a native Spanish speaker, um, you'll enjoy the translations. So I click on close. Now if I pick a couple of files, let's just open, say the last three and the first three of the other one, just to show you what they look like. It's a bit quicker than opening them all. You can see what I've done. This is the sort of scenario that you had. Um, so now I've got some pre-translated files. Different translation for each one because they've been pseudo translated, so it's just nonsense. That's representative of the um, of the actual translation of the, of the actual file in the language it's going into. Um, so that's what I've done. So pseudo translated all of those files. What I would do then is I want to put all of these files into one file so I can do something such as you suggested. So if I just select all of those files and I right click. And down the bottom here, I've got this split the selected files, which is um, an action that's added when you install Studio Views. Now you may be looking for merge files, but the application doesn't work like that because normally it's used for, split, for splitting files. So what you'll do is click on split the files and you'll see that it says split by equal parts. So if I check that box and was to change that to one, that's actually gonna have the effect of merging all of those files into one. In fact, because I've got 54 files there, if I put two, three, 10, whatever, it's going to have to merge something in order to get them into the number of files I've asked. So the split is sort of a, maybe you should say split or merge or something like that. Um, but this is the way it works anyway. So I've said one, it should give me one file. I could specify specific um, things which I want to include in my split, but I'm not going to. The file is going to be renamed, renamed and given its own numbering system. There's only one file, so this is not really going to matter. I'm going to put all the files, rather than put them in here, which is deeply nested in my folder structure, what I'm going to do is just navigate up to the nested file process, and I'm going to create a new folder in here. New folder, I'm going to call it merged files. And in there, I'll create another folder and I'll call it ES for my Spanish. And so I'm going to put all the file, or I'm going to put the file into this Spanish folder. So it's just somewhere separate for me so I can find it more easily. I don't have to do that. I'm just doing it for the uh, purpose of this little demonstration. So there's the path to the file, most files ES, and I click on OK. And that's going to go through and it's going to create one SDLX lift file for me, created from all 54 of those files. So you can see that it's done that, it's exported them into one file. If I view the report, I'll get a little log file there and you can see that it shows me all the different files that are included. It's, they're all the same name because I've fabricated the, the example obviously, but you can see that they're all different folders. It's taken every single one of those files, no matter how deeply it was, it was nested, um, and created one file with it, with 1539 words in it, 54 segments. 
So I close that. I'll say OK. So I'll just select one file, explore the containing folder, go to my listed files, list files, ES, and there's the log file explaining what it did, and there's the actual STLXLIF file. So what I'm going to do, uh, now that I've got that file translated, I'm going to, I could add it into this project, uh, but I'm going to keep it separate just for the purpose of this example, just to uh, make it a little bit clearer. And I'm going to just use Control Shift O and create a single file project to just go through my little exercise here. Oop, select the STLXLIF file. So there's my project. So you can see it's got all the files in it as if they were um, actually separate files, but they're not, they're single files. You can see, and I can also navigate them through them here. That's just the way it works. Then I'm gonna to go to my review tab and export for bilingual review. So this should give me my word file. So I say finish, close, open the folder containing the exported file. There it is, and if I double click on that. So it opens up in Microsoft Word and we can take a look at it. Here's my file with all my pseudo translated uh, nonsense in here. So what we'll do is we'll just change a couple of these segments. So I'm just gonna put, I'll put PF underscore at the beginning of some of these. Just so that we can validate that it's me making some changes. Or maybe we'll just delete some text here and there. Just so it looks more like a reviewed file. Just complete nonsense, but you get the idea. So, and then I'll save that. In fact, let's save as updated. And close it. Make a note of where it is. And I'm going to come back to my update from bilingual review. So we'll pick up the file when it comes back again. We'll add a specific review document and pick up the updated file. We'll change the status of updated segments to, um, let's say that they're, let's just say they're all translated. I can create a backup of the project file before updating in case I want to go back on it, so that's always a good idea. And then I'll just click on finish. Close that, reopen my file. And you can see I've got all my changes in the file. And, and every one that I've changed is updated and the ones I haven't changed is not updated. So I've imported my file from the bilingual review. What I'll do now let me just explore the containing folder here because I've forgotten where it was. It was in my most files. I'm just going to copy that path so I know where it is. Um, normally this process is going to take a bit longer and you'll be going backwards and forwards between different people and it won't look so complicated as it is right now while I'm trying to go through the entire workflow. Um, but now if I go back to my project, my original project, which is this one here, um, and if I come back to my files view in Spanish, just select all the files. And I'm going to say import into the selected files. I'm going to add the file that I've just updated. Again, I could exclude some segments in here if I wanted to. So I could, for example, if something had already been translated, I could exclude the translated segments or whatever statuses they were in the other files. So same sort of idea as we had with the export. Um, I'm not going to exclude, I'm not going to exclude anything, I'm going to import it all. And I'm going to say, okay. So we've updated 10 of the selected files and that presumably are the ones where I did make changes on because I didn't make changes to all of them, if you remember. There's a little report that is created that tells me also 
um, which files have had the changes made in them and which ones didn't so you might want to keep those for your records I think there's probably a total at the bottom there we go and how long it took um, I'm going to say OK. I don't want to open any of those files. I'll just say OK. And then what I'm going to do, um, do I want to open all the files? Yeah, let's open all the files um, that were there originally. So that's my file open and you can see we've got all the files updated where I made changes and not updated where I didn't make changes. If I close that and I just open some single files just to show you how that, that did actually work. There's just one of the files in one sentence. You can see it's got my change in it. If I open another one, I don't know which one it was actually. Let's just open a couple. Let's open those three. There we go. You can see a change, a change, a change in the specific files. So that's essentially how it works. So it's pretty cool, pretty easy, and you can do everything there with one app. So all you're going to do is use the Studio Views application, which is a superb application um, to merge your files into however many you want, or whichever files you want to merge into one. And then you can use the bilingual export for bilingual review and studio out of the box based on the file that you created for merge. So really simple. And you can do that from any file or from any source file, whether it's a, a come within a package that you've been given by somebody else or whether it's a project that you created yourself, it really doesn't matter. So really, really excellent application.